but if you're looking for a shortcut um, this is one of the ways I started I think I mentioned it um, a little bit maybe in my page in Graft Carper magazine years ago but anyway um, it, just for instance if you can't get a hold of whey protein um, I'm not sure if uh, the old products like Castellan still exist um, I certainly haven't seen them for a long time um, soluble caseins but anyway um, yeah, what I started off with in the early 80s um, was something like this which was um, a proprietary um, blend uh, whey protein blend so anyway um, it harks back to the old um, uh, Fred Wilton days of catching chavel and paste uh, on milk protein paste in the, in the rivers uh, some of which I've actually tested my baits on because I used to live out that way in North Kent. But anyway, um, let's have a look at milk protein baits um, and how you can do some uh, some really great baits um, in very simple ways and really pimp them up, pimp them up and um, make them far more biologically active. So there's a few little tips in, uh, in terms of how to make them far more water reactive, uh, far more... Um, detectable uh, for, for more optimized for cold water and um, how to activate a few more systems and senses within the fish so let's have a look okay so first off we've got a big tub of whey protein blend uh, with casein uh, the other tub here is whey protein concentrate, whey protein isolate and uh, a few other little things like thickeners and flavours uh, salt and sweeteners in the first one it looks brown because it contains cocoa powder which is the first mention um, I could say of uh, something which will relax the fish or at least de-stress it uh, cocoa is well known as a, a balancing agent. Uh, other um, antigens include, um, let's see now, ginger, um, lemon, orange, bergamot. Um, I'm going to include some uh, some blitz ginger in this blend uh, because anything to increase digestion really makes a difference. But it's also an um, antigenic uh, flavour too. And uh, if you have any levers um, in your lake, they're going to up your chance because I know for a fact, I mean, I had a 46 leather on, on ginger. I've had a couple of 40 leathers. And I also had tuitions with a couple of guys who caught heather leather. And they caught it on uh, one of their, <laughs> their key success with ginger. So anyway... Um, this particular brand has been bulked up with um, uh, flaxseed and barley flour and uh, linoleic acids. Um, so this is something to bear in mind because the reading that you will look at, which is quite crucial really when you're selecting whey proteins, uh, you'll be looking at a reading per scoop. Now, the scoop sizes are different here. Now, whether this is to do with your bodybuilding um, or whatever you uh, you apply it to, within each one, you'll have a scoop and it can be a different size. So one could be 20 a gram scoop, one could be a 25, one could be a 30 gram scoop. So in this case, we've got a 25 and we've got a 30. Um, and you get a reading of how much protein per scoop you get. Don't take this as an absolute. In carp bait, there's very few absolutes that can be proven scientifically in a tank. And this is just a, one, a perfect example of an abstract absolute here. So it says on the right, the cocoa whey protein concentrate uh, per scoop contains about 17 grams of protein. And uh, on the left, uh, it contains 23 grams per 30 grams. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the whey protein and the casein uh, are contributing. It could mean that there's an inclusion of, high inclusion of um, mixed amino acids 
uh, in pure form. It could mean that there's an inclusion of creatine. Basically, uh, it's a measurement of nitrogen content. So anyway, um, look carefully at the uh, the protein per scoop and look at the itemized um, amino acids in there because that can be uh, quite important. I like to look at uh, the percentage uh, content at least of uh, um, the more palatable amino acids and um, that does include, I mean in the case of bodybuilding you're looking at leucine and arginine um, in muscle building uh, in terms of limiting amino acids but in fishing terms let's have a look at this um, this one here although it appears to be a higher quality because it's got a higher level of um, whey protein isolate um, the only things it really lists are leucine, isoleucine, valine, aspartic acid and glutamic acid <clears throat> and uh, for me the bottom two are in significantly higher levels um, which is important glutamic acid is a it's like a comparison gluta uh, glutamic acid it's a comparison amino acid in terms of um, well um, it's uh, in terms of uh, feet triggering palatability anyway that's very important aspartic acid is another palatable palatable amino acid <clears throat> but I'm also looking for other ones in here as well so this isn't really about nutrition and bioavailability at this stage it's not what I'm looking at this one here contains alanine cysteine and uh, aspartic acid glutamic acid and uh, yeah for me these are very important because basically what I'm doing is I'm using a very old school kind of um, uh, approach which is I, I like to make milk protein paste and uh, I barely barely scald them or rather steam them when you're steaming it go you know it affects baits and denatures amino acids at a higher temperature but you do it very quickly so um, a lot of them a lot more of them remain intact and so therefore detectable uh, detectable uh, but also um, yeah a lot of people are very scared about fishing with paste so that's my approach in winter I love fishing with paste I, f I love fishing all year round with paste um, I pack my PVA bags with paste um, and very very quickly scalded as in um, steam scalded baits my hook baits are steamed for a significant amount of time but then um, the point of contact with the steam is uh, repaired because I, I add um, other factors to that uh, the exterior of the baits without ever drying them I don't dry my baits like that in the conventional ways at all, especially not after heating. It's the last thing I'd want to do, um, which I'll go to in, well, into quite detailed um, fashion in my ebooks. But anyway, uh, one of the factors that we're looking at here, say we make a blend of the cocoa, and uh, which is a blend of milk protein concentrate, micellar casein, and soya protein isolate. Make a blend of that and a blend of the other which contains a higher far higher level of um, whey protein isolate so what we're doing is we're basically raising um, the available protein content so in effect in a bait what we're doing is we're actually providing the fish with a higher concentration gradient of free form soluble amino acids for them to follow uh, through the water column and this is a really big key when it comes to milk proteins because originally when we made milk protein boilies they were locked up solid in egg and uh, my god they were insoluble and they just used to in summer i remember they used to sit on the bottom uh, ferment due to the anaerobic bacteria there which incidentally the fish obviously used to supplement their um their gut bacteria um, for digestion 
but then these would form ammonium and this would be very bad for small waters especially and of course baits like that would become unpalatable and I think it's really only because the rise of the rising um, milk protein prices put a lot of anglers off um, but uh, yeah I think there's another reason why milk proteins are very popular uh, as just as hook baits and also because in winter <clears throat> they've always been great uh, because obviously uh, they're great for uh, for repair and uh, rebuilding for carp. Um, so what else am I going to put in a bait like this, a milk protein bait for winter and spring? Well, here's a very obvious example. So this is um, this is spirulina. Uh, there's various grades of spirulina. Um, you can add uh, broken cell chlorella as well. Um, and I'm going to add Himalayan salt, which uh, I'm going to crush up. Um, if you can't get that, then you could use sea salt as well. Sea salt did me very well for years and years and years before Himalayan became uh, a lot more accessible. So if I make a blend of two of these powders, 50-50, they obviously they contain colours, <clears throat> um, flavourings, salts, and sweeteners. So it's quite a cross uh, cross section. Neither of these contain a di digestive agent, and um, for that, that was missing years and years ago in the eighties. Uh, not so many people knew about that as being a crucial factor in it. Um, enzymes, yes, they are some feeding, feeding triggers, feeding triggers per se, um, as peptides. But what we can do today is cheat a bit. Uh, what I've got here is a little selection, and yeah, if uh, if you cannot get cheaper versions of these, then these are options. So you got here, you've got capsules of bromelain, so the pineapple. If you can't get that, and then just um, liquidize pineapple. Uh, here I've got a version um, of digestive enzymes which uh, so will work on, on carbohydrates with the amylase and uh, it'll also work on, let's see what we've got, papain and I'll get on to papain in a minute um, and pepsin extract. So it's going to work on your, your proteins very effectively and across the board, broad spectrum and uh, reduce your whole your whole food ingredients uh, into more digestible energy efficient forms um, for your your fish to uh, to detect so really in this in a, a milk protein bait in any bait for me bait detection feed triggering is it water reactivity and feed triggering is really the major part of it i'm not into food i'm into nutrients that trigger feeding which is not a bad thing, it's a great thing. Uh, it makes baits extremely effective. Uh, another uh, shortcut here, so it's basically that's what you're doing, you, you're generating uh, <clears throat> energy shortcuts for the fish, which are very, very instant indeed, and uh, can be habit forming. And you can use very, very low volumes of bait with this form of bait. Um, so with this multi-digest uh, enzyme, so again, I think it's bromelain or papain based. Um, in this case, uh, yeah. So we've got bromelain, we've got amylase and lipase, um, and and papain as well. Now, if you can't get anything like that, then you can use the whole mango or pa uh, papaya for uh, the enzymes, and of course you can use pineapple as well. Uh, so these are all natural flavours, they're best if they're heated uh, very mildly and dehydrated, so they're far more concentrated. Um, and in the case of this one, you have a little thing called betaine HCL. Betaine is really, uh, uh, it's, it's one of those es essential uh, cellular components which, for one thing, balance uh, cellular pressures. Extremely important. Um, and uh, if you look at any studies on beetroot, for instance, and long distance runners or, or uh, uh, salmon going up rivers, also um, 
in terms of energy efficiency increases stamina um, so yeah it's potent and uh, there are thousands of processes that go on within the cells so this is really about cellular metabolism and uh, we're basically making energy shortcuts that get through the uh, the cell wall and um, and improve the, the uh, energetic and um, nutrient performance in cells of the fish and we're also changing the brain chemistry so one of the aspects that we're doing um, with that I mean this just looks like you know ordinary um, lemon in here if you've got one aspect which is lemon oil in other words the the ascorbic acid content so you've got natural flavors in there you've got um ginger which is another obviously digestive um uh agent uh, in terms of ginger oil but you can also obviously um blitz it and get that in your bait as well ideal for winter um if you want to go further i have um uh, Ascorbic acid here with orange flavour. Um, orange oil is another um, excellent flavour, often overlooked. Um, you can blend that with um, so many, so many things: cinnamon oil, uh, clove oil, eugenol. Um, the list goes on and on and on of herbs and spices that can be used from root extracts and so on. So, this, uh, yeah, there's a few ideas here. If you want to bulk up the liquids, I'd say avoid using water at all costs. Uh, this is a product which is um, it's blitzed up um, hemp kernels. So it's very high uh, in omega oils. And uh, so these are all ideal for winter for cold and cold temperatures. And also it contains another um, uh, very interesting extract, rosemary extract. If you look into that. The benefits of that you find uh, very little used in carp bait but another little edge if you're looking for little edges as an aside here um, we've got miso and um, going to miso quite a bit because this is a live product uh, as opposed to marmite which is really is buffered by 10 percent salt and sodium chloride um, and it's just really um, it's fermenting yeast you know, buffered and uh, distributed throughout the country as that product, um, as yeast extract. Miso's blend of rice and um, and soya fermented, and it does have extra salt, um, but it's alive. So it does create um, white yeast on the surface, it's beneficial. And um, what I have discovered is with... Um, when you have a live product and you add it with marmite, then the marmite activates and feeds the live. So you have an increased reaction. So when you have the presence of those alongside other enzymes, natural enzymes and uh, bacteria enzymes, then which will occur naturally in your bait anyway, um, then you're onto a good thing, especially with very, very dense, very high protein baits, because you're starting to break them down naturally within the baits there. And this is with, without the recourse of going and putting by a cell or uh, similar kinds of um, very high um, metabolite nucleotide dense um, yeast in your bait for winter. And of course, yeast have been always been very, very successful in winter and cold water conditions with good reason. So there we go. There's a few ideas and um, what I'll do, I'll make up a, a bait. Um, and then you can see what uh, what kind of thing I'm talking about here. Okay, so what I've got here is a blend of enzymes, spirulina, chlorella, um, Himalayan salt, and um, I've got, uh, got this, I was just about to add some uh, whey concentrate blend. And uh, let it go in. Very soluble. And uh, the next one as well. I'm just going to mix all this up together uh, to make the powder. Now the so that's going to be uh, this amount here. Um, 
What I've got in here is a miso, got marmite, and the red stuff are two parts. So instead of conventional flavour, what I've got there is actually the juice from cranberry sauce. Because I happen to notice that uh, it's pure cranberry extract um, packed with antioxidants and, uh, and uh, beetroot juice added as well for betaine, extra bit of that added betaine content. And um, what I'm going to add to that then next is, this is totally old school, I'd recommend using other binders. You've got loads of binders, albumins in the, uh, the milk proteins anyway. Um, this is for uh, for people who are completely addicted to using egg. So um, I've opened it up a bit anyway because this isn't just um, whole egg um, mixed up. What I've got here is blitzed hemp um, kernel. So there's a heck of a lot of omegas in there, um, and uh, loads and loads of particulates, and uh, that's why this egg looks slightly different. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add the egg to the other components, and that will be the liquid base, and uh, all I'm going to do then is add the powder to the liquid base, liquid base to make the initial paste for baits. Okay, just as a, an aside, I'm, uh, I'm going to add some ginger powder to the mix and also some cinnamon for a bit of eugenol, um, which is both very, very well proven for the winter as I'm making uh, winter hook baits. And I'm just going to pep these baits up a little bit. And uh, I love to do that. And one of the ways I'm going to make it slightly alternative because this is uh, definitely uh, one of the lesser used essential oils, this is lemongrass. So I'm going to use that, and actually I'll use uh, a little bit of geranium as well uh, in this bait, because that definitely produces big mirrors, for me anyway. And uh, I'm going to put a bit of this cough syrup in, and I'll uh, explain the reason why that is. Um, because it contains uh, a tincture, which is an alcohol um, base of capsicum oleoresin. Okay, so as I don't have any uh, red hot chilli pepper um, to hand, at least in a, a soluble oil anyway, uh, I say a miscible kind of oil, um, like hemp oil. That's what I'm going to use uh, because the extraction solvent in this is also is ethanol. So obviously um, you're probably aware of the ethyl um, ethanol flavours so successful over the decades. So this is what I'm going to put in there. Uh, so the other um, couple of uh, well proven ingredients in here are again um, clove oil and uh, menthol and uh, a strong ginger tincture is included um, along with a few uh, sweeteners fructose and glucose which I was, I was going to get on to really um, sweeteners are always really really um, Handy. I don't believe that fish actually get repelled by bitter taste at all because so many flavours are bitter, especially you know the acidic ones. But I do believe that um, fructose makes all the difference, and of course honey, a third of honey is sucrose. So um, that's a yeah millennia proven fishing bait if there ever was one. So yeah, I might even add a bit of honey here, and uh, of course honey being soluble, any soluble sugars, if you're uh, adding enzymes, you're getting reducing sugars too, so, um, you know, any bait you're including carbs in, get those enzymes in there, get some alcohol going. Okay, next stage. Okay, so I'm just uh, adding uh, the powders to the liquid. And I'm going to mix that up and make a, a stiff paste. And uh, that can be left for uh, anything from 24 hours, 3 days, or indefinitely 3 months um, until you use it. And uh, while I remember it, of course, you've got the, uh, the paste form of miso, but also you can get soup. So... That means you can put that directly into your base mix as a powder, which is also uh, very handy because you can make bait on the bank like that 
make them instantly live. So just another little edge there, just to add to your armory. Yeah, so um, when you're mixing this, it gets very, very sticky. Milk protein do that, um, especially with high percentage of, of very, very soluble uh, high proteins, uh, like whey protein. Um, but that's all good. It means it's going to work the water con very, very effectively and be easily detected, releasing loads of free amino acids and uh, peptides. But uh, one thing I would add is, you're probably wondering why I'm making a very small batch here, and that is because when you make new baits, always make very small batches because loads of people worry about getting an ultimate bait immediately, and they go out and buy tons and tons of ingredients and uh, try and do it one off. Well, you don't try and uh, climb Everest without climbing small mountains first and uh, even starting off in very small hills. So this is basically the same uh, same thing. When you, I found one of the best uh, edges in fishing is uh, uh, having actual feedback from catches. It gives you true confidence. It's not based on recipes and hearsay opinions. It's based on actual catches. That really gives you confidence. So what you can do on um, with when you ever whenever you make a new bait a new recipe, make a very small batch, make different versions of it, and test it on easy fish, because believe me, they will tell you they've got all the answers. They'll tell you what's going on with that bait. And the other thing that I've noticed when I've been testing uh, is, say for instance, you've got three rods in a swim, and you've got um, three different baits in that swim. Uh, and you might have the same rig on each, which tends to happen very, 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 very commonly. What will happen, um, because I've seen it from my own eyes, um, is a fish will go from one bait to another, to another. They'll test them. They'll test each bait, see if, uh, you know, they're testing the bait, they're testing the rig, and so on. Well, one of the things I discovered is if you have two different recipes on a rig, then certain fish will have, uh, they'll be more open to taking those baits than others, they'll be more sensitive to those, the profiles and nutrients, etc. within the bait that are issuing off in solution. But the other thing is, that if your bait uh, has anything that makes it suspicious to the fish, you may not be aware of at all, or it might not contain the nutrients the fish wants in that moment. If the fish goes upon uh, the next rod and it has two different versions, guess what? it might well pick them up. So if you do that on the third rod as well, so you have six different baits, and you have a fish that has unique nutrient needs in that moment, chances are it's going to pick at least one of those baits up. And uh, that's proven to be the case for years and years. I keep uh, picking up fish that either are not caught very much, or they're very wary feeders. They're known to be wary feeders. So... If you're looking for those fish that are, or oh, you're just on a water that's extremely difficult, um, these are edges that you can apply. Um, so keep open-minded, that's my recommendation. Okay, so next stage is to make these into some form of paste baits individually. Or actually I could leave this and let it firm up, because whey proteins do that. Um, so I could bag this up in, zip, in a Ziploc bag, get the air out of it, and, uh, and just leave it, let it enzyme um, treat itself, pre-digest itself, and then cut the paste into squares, put a couple on a rig, each rig, um, make different versions of this and the way you go for the winter, because pastes really work well in winter. Um, the other thing I would add is... Uh, when you're making bait with egg, especially for the winter, I would say, yeah, at all costs, avoid it. Um, because it means your bait is far more water reactive and you've avoided the number one danger signal in bait throughout the world, I'd say, is egg. Because it's used in uh, pretty much, well, well over 95% of the commercial baits that are ruled. Right, and there you have it, just uh, the first batch, very malleable, very self-binding, 
perfect to make uh, baits of any form you like and uh, I'll try making some to hook baits now right and there we have it it's a few baits there I made some rolled baits uh, which I'm going to coat and I made some square baits which are obviously going to wobble in the water and be a lot more difficult for the fish to deal with <clears throat> when picking them up and taking them in their mouth um, yeah the square ones are the ones I favour greatly the uh, the round ones if you're going to make round ones I advise you to roll them very 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 thoroughly so they're not just uh, rolled in a 360 degree arc uh, because then you're going to change the density and they're going to require a harder suction for the fish to pick up and um, it's going to make the, the baits denser um, it's going to make them far more efficient in many ways um, beside that I've made a, an alternative version here so what I've done here is I've incorporated extra salts and spirulina and so this version here will be a good counterpoint for the others um, there's all sorts of different um, variations you can do on any new bait uh, but this uh, is a this angle is extremely well proven for winter and spring spring especially when the fish move over to uh, dinoflagellates i.e. They, they get into algae feeding so you see them in the upper layers feeding on algae and as it comes through in the shallows especially um, here's another little edge I've uh, come across just in the uh, the winter sales here post Christmas um, this is Montmorency um, cherry extract so it's basically the dehydrated cherry um, juice and it's extremely high in anthocyanins and some polyphenols and if you remember in my earlier Big Cop Bait Secret Sea books I was very big on the phenols indeed um, because they're powerful anti-inflammatories and antioxidants and as you might well um, uh, connect um, the famous Robin Red is also very very potent in those uh, so anyway that's it for now um, it's just a, a shortcut to make some very very simple baits and to really truly optimize your bait you'll need a, quite a bit more information and uh, guidance but uh, yeah have fun if you want more information I'm sure you do uh, if you want one-to-one uh, -one tuition you want to have a look at the uh, um, my uh, bait making secrets ebook e-course I might add um, go to um, baitbigfish.com and uh, I'll see you there